It's time for our next video in our series on spinal cord injury awareness for the month of September. And I just want to stop real quick and say thank you for those of you that are watching and sharing. These videos have been getting a lot of attention and a lot of hits and I really, really appreciate that. I could care less about statistics like that except this particular series is to help make people aware about spinal cord injuries. So it touches my heart if people are sharing and people are caring to watch it and to learn because that's what this series is all about. So thank you for watching and thank you for passing this on for your friends and family to also learn and care about spinal cord injuries. Now, moving on to tonight's subject. Um, I picked this subject because it is we got a nip in the air tonight and it's South Carolina and I feel like fall is just around the corner. So what I want to talk to you about tonight is how when you, when you sustain a spinal cord injury, it breaks the thermostat in your body. And what that means is um, the thermostat that helps, helps heat up our bodies and cool down our bodies is located through our spinal cord. So when you have injured your spinal cord, it messes all that up. There's a couple reasons for this. Number one, many of us do not sweat below the level of our injury. So for my level of injury, and I don't sweat very much below that level, or if you're a high injury and think if you've broken your neck and you don't have any sensation and you're paralyzed from your neck down, that is that much of your body that no longer sweats. Well, we all know that sweating is our body's way of cooling our system down. So if you don't have that capability anymore, you can overheat very quickly. And then getting warm has to do with circulation. And because we don't walk, we just sit, all the blood pulls down into our feet and legs. When you walk, when you make this walking motion, that squishes your muscles, squish the blood to continue the cycle. Well, when that's not happening, the blood kind of pulls and it's much harder for it to get that circulation process. If you touch my legs right now, they are ice cold and they can be ice cold in 100 degree weather. And the reason for that is, is because the blood is just sitting and pulling. When I lay down at night after about 10 minutes, now the blood is even and that blood is starting to circulate through my body. It's like ice cold water through my veins and I shiver and freeze for about 30 minutes. And then it finally all gets regulated and warmed up again and I'm okay. That is because the bad circulation where we sit all day. Now today, it's been Sunday and I went to church this morning and tonight I wear a skirt. So um, when I wear skirts, I tie my legs together. Most people don't know that, but now you do. And I do that because my legs splay out so bad and it just looks awful in a skirt heavy legs splayed out. But because of that, I don't wiggle like I've told you before. I don't cross my legs. I don't do all that. So tonight, I'll be really cold when I lay down and go to bed because it's really, normally I try to keep that going. So um, there are some things you have to do. We try to do preventative. I used to get so cold, I was hypothermic cold. Like I literally could not process what you were saying to me. I have learned I can't let myself get that cold. So we try to dress in layers. Um, you can, a uh, heated blanket that plugs in. Oh my goodness, that is wonderful. Um, they even have for your car, they'll plug into a cigarette lighter. A hot shower, I'll go take a shower so my body will heat up. Otherwise, I can go outside in 40 degree weather, be outside 10 minutes and I'm shivering, shaking so bad and it will take me four hours to get warm. Or I can try some of the other things I've learned and maybe after about an hour and a half, two hours, I've finally gotten warm again. If you're too hot, keep a wet icy towel on your neck, spray yourself down to give yourself artificial sweat and stay in the shade. If you have to go sit in a vehicle with your air conditioning blasting or a car and your heat blasting, make sure you don't let your body get too far or, or you get yourself in a position that takes you a long time to recover from. So I didn't know if you know about that. I know those of us with paralysis understand what it means where most of us are cold about 95% of the time, even in the summer. Um, or maybe the opposite extreme, maybe you're hot and can't ever get cool. But um, maybe if you didn't, weren't aware of that spinal cord injury, I hope you've learned something tonight about our thermostats and how they get broken when you have a spinal cord injury. Thanks for watching and please continue to share.